Hello and welcome to Hacking the Exile, the shows that give you extra material from the Exile 60 series. Over the this season you've seen almost everyone that worked with Amelia here in Brussels and, and you've also seen tests from Sweden. But one guy you haven't seen is our other local assistant, Niels Agneson. Welcome. Thank you. It's it's a pleasure to have you here. It's you're the, actually the only one uh, in our entire staff that hasn't been on the show. No, I know. Um, I tried to avoid the camera, I think. You try to keep a low profile. Uh, well, no, just avoiding the cameras. That that would, from my perspective, be keeping a low profile. Oh uh, yeah. I Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we haven't seen you much in the show either, which could no. be because the show is about Brussels and you're in Sweden. Yeah, exactly. So where, where are you based in Sweden? Well, I, I try to help Amelia when she's in Sweden. It can be about conferences and holding some, uh, well, like uh, everything when she is in Sweden. So you are a go-to guy in Sweden and you're based yes. in Stockholm. Yes, I live in Stockholm, work in Stockholm and Uppsala. Okay, well, uh, and Quite recently, we had a conference uh, or a seminar in Stockholm, which you were organizing for Amelia, right? Yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that one? Well, we tried to organize uh, like maybe one, two uh, discussion events in, uh, in Stockholm every month. And the uh, last one was about dark nets and how we can use dark nets uh, to help like drug users or maybe other groups, but this event event was about drug users. Okay, and it's on Fridays because that is when Amelia has actually has the time to go to Stockholm. Yes, Friday is a very good day to be in Stockholm for Amelia. Yeah. Uh, and was it well attended? Uh, well, um, how, how many people do you need <laughs> to to have it well attended? But uh, also we have put it on YouTube now, so oh, well. you can watch it. Excellent. I'm, I'm looking forward to see it. I actually haven't seen it. Yeah, it's uh, on the Pirate Party's yeah, YouTube account. So it will be on the same uh, account as this show. So if you manage to find this show, you will probably be able to find that one as well. Mm. Uh, actually, we could do some editing magic and add a little bit of that show into this episode right now. Ja, it's, uh, egentligen så har jag inte jag tänkt så mycket kring de här frågorna förrän jag läste Ante Gerventus rapport för Pompidou-gruppen. Uh, där han skrev om hur man arbetar i Europeiska rådet med frågor som relaterar till uh, uh, drogförsäljning på nätet, uh, organiserad brottslighet kring drogförsäljning. Men där det också fanns den intressanta slutsatsen att socialdepartement och andra typer av sociala tjänster egentligen har varit väldigt långsamma med att plocka upp uh, anonymitet och konfidentialitet som skademinimeringsverktyg. För det vi vet om drogmissbruk eller människor som hamnar i olika svårigheter i livet är att de väldigt sällan söker hjälp om de tror att de råkar ut för risker på grund av hjälpsökandet. Alltså att konsekvenserna av sökandet efter hjälp blir större än att man bara får hjälp med precis det man vill ha. Och då tror jag att liksom andra slutsatsen i rapporten är just att man borde undersöka metoder att använda darknets för att tillhandahålla assistans för människor som behöver assistans under en, i en konfidentiell miljö. Och jag tyckte det var intressant att det är en fråga som inte har lyfts så mycket när vi har diskuterat också skademinimeringsprincipen i Sverige. Därför tänkte jag att det var bra att lägga den på, på bordet och eftersom det råder mycket moralpanik och kanske det, just nu så har det varit väldigt mycket uppmärksamhet riktat mot just anonymitet och identitet och personuppgiftsskydd och övervakning. Och då tänkte jag att det också kunde vara bra att prata om några av de positiva aspekterna av konfidentialitet som de här tjänsterna ju faktiskt innebär och hur man omsätter det på ett konstruktivt sätt för alla, sam alla medlemmar i samhället. So they were there for you, that we could have had discussion in the dog. But you were actually seen in one of the episodes. You didn't always manage to avoid the cameras. Yes, I know. Well, uh, actually, I've been on two episodes, but yeah, we can talk about the later one. Okay, which was the first one? Uh, I kind of just introduced myself in the office here in Brussels. Please, uh, five, yeah. Felipe, can you step into here? Yeah. Well, this is Nils. Oh, Nils, meet Felipe. Yeah, hi. Hello, Nils. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Yes. And you're also in the introduction to every episode. Oh, yeah. No. We can Maybe. <laughs> yes, you are. Quick, right. We can see you and Amelia sitting full pa folding ah, yeah, papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. that is from the second episode where you're uh, starring. Yes, exactly. Which is about folding papers. Yeah. 
Well, it wasn't that fun. <laughs> what? Folding papers? <laughs> yeah, I know you do a lot of that here in Brussels. <laughs> in Brussels. So what was it about? What was all the papers about? Uh, we sent out some letters to um, every, every, not every, but a lot of politicians in Sweden from uh, Folkpartiet. Okay. And uh, I think it made some impact of the member of the European Parliament here in... Uh, you were contacting local people in, in the par that party in Sweden Yes, exactly. To, to raise try. awareness about their parliamentarians here. For the data protection regulation. Ah, the data protection regulation, which uh, the viewer will have seen coming up every now and then in this show. And you're also managing uh, or helping out with one of, of our uh, campaign sites for the data protection campaign. Ah, yes. The dataskydd.net. And this campaign has been going on for almost, well, almost a year now. Ah, yes. Mm? Almost a year. And, of course, the file is still open. It's currently in Trialog, mm. so we don't know where, where it is. But if, if, if you want to uh, help with the data protection campaign, uh, currently it's the government uh, in your member state that you need to affect, because well, the parliament is more or less done with its uh, handling of the topic. So put pressure on your government for a stronger data protection reform. Uh, I think uh, it might be needed. I think so too. And what other topics are you currently working with? What are coming up on, on the events in Stockholm? Uh, we are going to try, hopefully at least, uh, talking about um, what children does on the internet and how to protect them. Um, I think that could be a really great topic actually. Well, it is a topic that has been covered in a lot of uh, events here in Brussels as well, not always with the best outcome. Okay. Uh, Why? Sometimes those events are hijacked by interest who wants to push for censorship. All right. Uh, protecting children is a very strong argument. Uh, if, if you want parliamentarians to pass anything, uh, think about the children is one of the best uh, campaign slogans. Because no parliamentarian wants to be seen as the, you know, the person not thinking about what is best for the children. Yeah. But well, we, we are the organizers, so we so want... we can sort of steer the yeah. conversation in the right direction. Exactly. Well, uh, I'm looking, and that will be streamed as well. As well, well as, as the previous one. Yeah, but it wasn't streamed, it was a put film. up okay. <laughs> afterward. But yes, uh, we'll try to stream it on, um, on the YouTube account, actually. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to see it. Uh, and I think with that, we can wrap up for today. Thank you very much for coming. And yeah. I hope, no, let's go back to one last thing. Oh. What will you do tomorrow? Um, tomorrow I will go to Germany and Bremen, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Why? Because uh, you said so, but we are going to visit the uh, German Pirate Party's General Assembly. Right? Exactly. Cool. And with you. that, uh, we're wrapping up for today. Thank you very much for coming and thank you, thank you for viewing. i videodagboken. Idag har jag varit runt med Amelia i Enköping och i Stockholm. Efter, vad blir det nu? Tusen timmar känns det som. Så är dagen slut. Imorgon blir det dock åter och åka tåg. Vi ska till Göteborg. Men just nu känns det bara skönt att få komma hem och sova tror jag. Och det tror jag Amelia också tycker.